What's up guys, Jay here and welcome back to our mission guide series in Deep Rock Galactic. Here we talk about the details and objectives of the individual mission types in the game and how you can be best equipped for them. In today's video, we're going to go over the details and intricacies of the elimination mission type. We're going to go over the basics of what the process of completing an elimination mission is like, the finer details and hidden intricacies that come with it, and some recommendations and guidelines on how to play each class in this particular mission. Lastly, we'll talk about the overall difficulty of the elimination mission and how it compares to the other types in the game. So if you guys are ready, let's dive into the mission type that is simple but very satisfying, the elimination mission. By the way, if you want to see more gaming videos, subscribe to the channel, that way it's easier to find my content. Time for a round of pest control, team. We got dreadnought cocoons on our scanners, and you get to eradicate them before they turn into something even worse. So you're going through an elimination mission in Deep Rock Galactic. Well, thankfully, these mission types are actually rather simple and easy to grasp. The part that is the problem for most people is actually completing the objective. The main goal in elimination missions is to locate and destroy multiple dreadnoughts, which are very large, very dangerous bug monstrosities that want to hurt you a lot. You do this by finding the cocoons that the dreadnoughts are sleeping in and waking them up, so to speak. After you find all the big nasty bugs and put them down for a permanent nap, you can call Molly to get yourself out for extraction. There aren't really any complex steps that you need to follow to complete this mission, and it's a lot more direct than the other types in the game. Time to earn your paycheck, team. Got a doozy of a swarm in the way. Like I said, elimination missions are much more straightforward mission types compared to the other kinds that we have covered recently. They don't have a crazy multi-step process needed to complete, and the objective is rather simple. However, that does not mean that there are things that can be useful to know and understand when it comes to completing these missions. First, similar to other mission types, the length and complexity modifiers can determine certain aspects about these missions. In this case, it determines the number of dreadnoughts you need to hunt, which can be either two or three. Speaking of which, the next thing to keep in mind is the kind of layout that the cave system has on these missions and how they can be used to find the cocoons. The caves consist of a small starter room at the beginning of the cave that has a lot of golden nitra to help you prepare for the coming fights. There are usually a few tunnels to various caves that can be taken in any order to get to the cocoons. You can find the cocoons using the terrain scanner as they are very big and glow red giving you an easy indication of where they are. Also, when you get close to them, you will start to see these kind of blue vein-like things surrounding the cocoons, which honestly is always really creepy to see, at least to me. And you will also hear a faint heartbeat that will get louder the closer you get to the cocoon. Once you eventually do find them, you have to shoot the cocoon several times in order to cause the dreadnought to spawn and begin the fight. Now that you have all that information, it's time to talk about the bugs of the hour themselves and go over just what the dreadnoughts are and what to expect from them. When you open the cocoon, one of three different Dreadnought variants will spawn. The standard Glyphon Dreadnought, the Dreadnought Hiveguard, or the Dreadnought Twins. Importantly, it should be noted that any Dreadnought variant can spawn from a cocoon, but the same variant cannot spawn from two consecutive cocoons. The Glyphid Dreadnought is probably the simplest one to describe and prepare for. Its entire body is covered with unbreakable armor. The only place it can be damaged is, well, its butt. To kill the Dreadnought, you need to break the armor plating on its backside in order to start damaging its main health bar. The armored shell is able to regrow after enough time passes or if the Dreadnought takes enough damage. After several cycles of breaking the armor and then damaging its health, the Dreadnought will eventually be eliminated. One thing to keep in mind is the kind of attacks that this Dreadnought has. It has a standard bite and swipe attack as well as the ability to spit explosive fireballs. Its biggest attack is its trembling stomp, which does a lot of damage in a wide radius around it. Just listen for the big roar and if you hear it, you need to run. The Dreadnought Twins are actually two bosses in one. Don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. In fact, personally, I feel these guys are actually the easiest to beat out of the whole bunch. The boss comprises two separate unique enemies, one called the Lacerator and one called the Arbalist, and they both have separate health bars. The Lacerator specializes in melee attacks while the Arbalist uses ranged abilities. The Lacerator is very aggressive and will chase the players when attacking, while the Arbalist prefers to stay on the walls. The Twins individually have less health than a regular Dreadnought, but they are also able to share health and armor when the difference in their health pools becomes too large, with the addition of a slight regenerative gain. They will also do this process one time in the middle of the fight if they did not do it before, regardless of their health difference. They are immune to damage during their health and armor share. Unlike the other variants, you can damage these guys by hitting them pretty much anywhere instead of just their backsides, although you do get bonus damage for hitting them there. Finally, there's the Dreadnought Hive Guard, which is my least favorite of the three, by the way. Similar to the other Dreadnought counterparts, the Hive Guard is heavily armored and has a variety of means to combat the players. However, it differs in the fact that it is not nearly as aggressive or fast, but features a large number of obstacles that the players must deal with in order to damage its main health pool. When it spawns, the Hive Guard will summon several Sentinel minions that will begin going after the players. During this phase, the Hive Guard itself is undamageable and will continuously attack. Once all the Sentinels have been killed, the Hive Guard will roar and expose three glowing spikes that can be attacked. 
attacked, one on top of its body and one on each side. After all three spikes have been destroyed, the Hive Guard will roar again and expose its main weak point, again on its butt, so you can deal damage to its main health pool. The armored shell will close back up after a certain amount of time has passed or a substantial amount of damage has been dealt, at which point another wave of sentinels will appear and then just rinse and repeat. Unfortunately, there is no way to actually cheat at this enemy fight and it definitely takes the longest time out of all of them. It has a similar array of attacks as the other dreadnoughts with the addition of the ability to fire mortar shots at the players, so just keep that in mind. Let me know down in the comments which dreadnought type is your favorite and least favorite to fight. One last thing to note about these missions is that swarms do not attack you in these missions, but smaller waves of enemies will occasionally attack, including while the dreadnought type is being fought. Also, since these missions are more combat focused, higher quantities of nitra can be found on the walls to aid in calling in resupply drops, just so you know. Something big is heading your way. Better prepare for the worst. Well, now that we know the kinds of big bugs we're going to fight in these caves, we need to be prepared for them. That means it's time to talk about the classes and how they can make these missions as smooth as possible, as well as if they do anything special for these missions. Well, first and foremost, in terms of necessity, I would say the gunner and scout are tied for the most valuable assets in these missions. With the gunner's high raw damage output and the scout's great single target control, they can work together well to eliminate the dreadnought menace. But with that said, let's go over each of the classes and see how they can assist us in these missions. The driller can play a very useful role in terms of completing these missions. Firstly, if needed, he can use his drills to clear the area around the cocoon to make the makeshift fighting arena you'll be in more open and accessible, giving you more room to maneuver. His satchel charges can also be useful in taking chunks out of the dreadnought's armor if need be. In terms of weapons, the driller can't really go wrong with any of the choices, but I would say the cryo cannon works great since not only can freezing the boss stop it from moving, but it also means you don't need to be as precise with your shots since the cold affects the entire body of the dreadnought not no matter where you hit it, making it great for constant sustained damage. The gunner, as I said, can be a tremendous help in these missions. It's all about killing big things and doing a lot of damage after all, and there is nothing the gunner likes more than shooting things a lot. His raw damage can help in shredding the armor as well as taking big chunks out of the dreadnought's health bar. The thunderhead and coil gun can be good choices to bring since they have good splash and penetration, allowing you to hit those weak spots even when you're not even trying. And of course, his shield can help keeping you safe during those heavy attacks or just help keep the pressure off of you during the assault. The Scout is another contender for MVP on these missions for several reasons. First, thanks to his high accuracy weapons, he can hit the weak spots and armor spots very easily from a safe distance. Secondly, with the use of his grappling hook, he is very good at getting the Dreadnought's attention and then either kiting it around for his team to hit the weak spots or just getting the drop on the Dreadnought from an advantageous position. His assault rifle and shotgun can be a good combo for picking at the weak spots from range and then doing close range burst damage. Finally, his cryo grenades can also help in weakening the Dreadnought if you can get the freeze off and his flares help you see what the boss is doing doing at all times. Lastly, the engineer can provide many different forms of utility to these missions. First, as always, he can easily set up his turrets and defensive equipment before the cocoon is open to set up a kill zone for the dreadnoughts. The lure grenades or shredder swarms can be good for distracting or chip damage. In terms of weapons, you really can't go wrong either way so long as you have good armor breaking capabilities. The smart rifle is good at hitting those weak points and the breach cutter can make shredding the armor easy since you don't really need to worry about aiming. Now that we've covered each of the classes themselves, let's go over a simple team comp. The Engineer and Driller should be working together to both weaken the Dreadnought's armor and contain the area of fighting as best they can, with the Driller focusing on taking out the armor and the Engineer keeping all of the other enemies at bay with his wide range area coverage. The Gunner and Scout should be focusing on laying into the bosses with everything they have to take it out as fast as possible, with the Gunner dealing heavy raw damage and the Scout dealing good precision damage. Remember as well that these roles could change with the addition of random events and modifiers, so don't be afraid to adjust and adapt if needed. Dreadnought's wiped out, for now. Good work team, hit the return button on the mule when you're ready and we will pick you up. Now that we've covered the basics of the elimination mission and talked about how the classes function in it, let's talk about where this mission stands when compared to the other mission types in the game. Remember that each mission type gets three different ratings, one for difficulty, one for how fun it is, and one for its complexity, each with a value of one to five, with one being low and five being high. Remember again that these ratings are just my personal take on this, so if you think it should be higher or lower, you are more than welcome to think that. First, in terms of difficulty, I'm gonna give it a three. Now this could probably be higher or lower, but it really depends on which Dreadnought variant you get rolled with during these missions. If you have to fight three and get stuck fighting two hive guards, that's going to be rough. But if you get the twins in a normal dreadnought, that's not so bad. So this rating can kind of fluctuate. Next, in terms of complexity, I'm going to give it a two because outside of knowing the mechanics of each dreadnought variant, there aren't too many intricate details in terms of these missions. You just find the boss, you kill it, and then you leave. 
Finally, for the enjoyment rating, I'm going to give it a 4. These missions, while simple and basic, can be a lot of fun at least to me because I think we need more boss fight type missions in this game personally. I would love to see a mission type where we fight some kind of massive glyphid queen that makes these dreadnoughts look like grunts by comparison. Plus, just taking on a big enemy that needs the whole group to work together feels very gratifying to me. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Well that about wraps up everything you need to know about going through an elimination mission and hopefully now you have a better understanding of what goes into them. So what do you guys think? Did I miss any details? Let me know down in the comments below and tell me again which is your favorite dreadnought to go up against. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next Friday for another video.